What's up guys and welcome back to the Realistic Room over the Wrexham. This is episode number 52 and we are in a rough spell right now. Two wins in our last 11, we're out of both cups. We're in mid-table, sat in 14th, not really fighting for much. I think we're about 10 points off the playoffs now due to our recent lack bad form. But we're still about, about 17 points above the drop zone. So we're kind of in that midfield pack. It's actually quite congested from like 6th down to like 15th. Um, but we're sort of in that midfield pack, not really fighting for anything. There's still 14 games to go, so if we do want to make a late playoff push, we're going to have to start turning our form around now, but that hasn't appeared to be happening over the last couple of episodes, so it's going to be a rough one. Well, some positive news, well, positive and negative news. Jewison and Bennett is back from injury, finally, and available, but Ryan Morris, you would have seen in the last episode, last game or last episode, he picked up an injury. He has broken his toe, another broken toe injury. I think that's the fourth one we've had this season. And I was going to say, you know, for the first time this entire season, we've got uh, our full squad. Uh, we've got, oh my word, absolute mouthful. We've got our full squad available after uh, Tom Bradshaw was injured for about seven months. But now Ryan Morris looks like he is out for the remainder of the season. But with Bennett's, Bennett and Koulibaly back, the squad immediately improves and uh, Roberts and Milne are both immediately saying look I know uh, Jewison and Ishmael are back but we want to keep our place as well lads unfortunately you will not be doing that Milner has been pretty decent since coming in Roberts has been very poor this season well the first game of the episode will be Millwall at home at the race course currently ninth uh, Millwall they're six points above the, above us and pushing for a playoff spe uh, playoff spot so it's going to be a tough one this but we did beat them 1-0 at the den earlier in the season so we're looking to complete the double over them in what is my 150th game in charge 69 wins 32 draws 48 defeats so we're looking for our 70th win in 150 in charge and that's just under a 50 percent win ratio which i'm super happy about and considering as well in each of these three seasons we've been we've gone we've been promoted into a new division as well so the challenges have uh, kept on getting harder but uh, we continue to do well and, you know, obviously this season's a bit of a flat one, but we want to avoid relegation and we will do that. I'm pretty confident of it. So looking for our 70th win in 150 world would be off to the perfect start. Jewison and Bennett back from injury and immediately involved just five minutes in. Alfie Devine, who's been absolutely phenomenal this season. Don't forget, guys, at the end of the, uh, each season, we're going to be having a player award. So player of the season, young player of the season and signing of the season. Alfie Devine could um, he could be available for all three of those awards, really. He has just been fantastic from that deeper midfield role this season. He initially won the ball back pretty much from kickoff. Ball got played out wide to Bennett with a beautiful cross in and Mullen. Uh, sorry, with De Divine, with just the, the intent more so than the defender to get his head on the ball. We would take an early lead here, but it would not last long, just six minutes as uh, our defensive issues would continue. We've been leaking goals recently and and really uh, goals have been avoidable. Our, our um, defensive efforts haven't been that great recently. I mean, the following them, to be fair to him, has kept a decent amount of clean sheets. But we've also been turning over a lot of balls that have led to goals. And when you're playing against the AI at this difficulty, you, you will get punished. It's just a matter of fact. And we were punished there. But we would retake the lead. Bennett and Devine again involved. Bennett with a beautiful switch ball before Devine finds Paul Mullen. And we would retake the lead. Paul Mullen's 15th league goal of the season. So he's, he's plugging along nicely. Obviously not hitting the numbers that he did in, in League 1 and League 2. But he's still, um, you know, in more than double figures, which I'm, I'm very happy about indeed. Well, Elliot Lee would almost make it 3-1, but for a really good save. And then Fleming forcing Fodderingham into a smart save down to his left just before half time, as uh, the visitors look for the equaliser. Well, going into the second half, Mendy would find Devine, who has been everywhere this game. And the midfielder would release an absolute rocket of a shot that crashes off the bar. Really unlucky not to get his second goal of the game and third goal involvement of the game. Before, uh, with 20 minutes on the clock, Mendy switches out to Koulibaly. And uh, Koulibaly, play, uh, playing a bit wider <laughs> uh, for some reason, finds Paul Mullen with a great cross. But PM10 can't grab his second. Smart save from the keeper as we look to see this game out. But as we enter the 90th minute, Millwall with a cross in. Headed out, not cleared. Saville, what can he do here? Denor, this is surely going to be the last chance of the game for Millwall. Can we hold on to the three points? Oh, it's fantastic defending as James Milner, the substitute, wins the ball back for us and that should surely kill the game off as Elliot Lee finds Paul Mullen. He's onside here. Lee then gets the ball back. Roscoe Vata to kill the game. Oh, it's off the bar, but Elliot Lee is going to 
tapping the rebound. He grabs the third goal, uh, third goal of the game for us, the fourth uh, between both teams, and that is practically the last kick of the game. As we see, as we see this one out, a dominant display. I'm very impressed by the returning Bennett and Koulibaly. They were everywhere, especially Jewis and Bennett. But Divine was my man of the match in that game. He was just absolutely phenomenal. Goal assist, hit the bar, and just yeah, really noticed the youngster in midfield today. Um, so we by completing the double over Millwall, we uh, grab three points on the boards and. Yeah, this is the thing, you know, we're back to winning ways, um, but in the start of the last episode, we won the opening game, then we lost three in a row, so we try and break that mould uh, here as we're up to 12 now, 45 points, a point behind Millwall, <sighs> 10 points behind Norwich, though, it, it, it's a rough one as we reject a bid here for Matty Folds, we're still trying to offload the left back, who's hardly featured this season, but we just have not had a realistic bid come in for him yet. As Koulibaly and Bennett come to us and say, boss, thanks for putting me back in the team. Felt like that was a good way to get back into the swing of things. And it absolutely was very impressed with those two. It's funny, isn't it? Because, uh, well, actually, I'll come back to that in a sec. Because we've had a youth scout update here from England. And Elliot Cox, my word, I mean, his potential isn't that high. It's only up to 85. But when you're worth £1.7 million, you're going to get signed up to the Youth Academy straight away. So we promote Elliot Cox. And the last four that we're um, uh, scouting here, Barry Pearson, Horton and Goodwin, sorry, Barry, not Barry, they all look pretty decent, although only a month or two in. So we're going to keep scouting them. But those four could have real potential. As we look at the scout, uh, the Youth Academy now, Elliot Cox immediately becomes a highest rated player in there, 66 overall. He could only potentially reach 85, but he could still be a really good player. So what we're going to do is we're going to promote him to the first team and then send him out on loan. Hopefully get him out on a six-month loan deal, get him some game time, and then come back at the start of the next season um, up a few ratings. But yeah, just uh, to drop, uh, just to go back to Koulibaly quickly. Obviously, when we brought him in from the free agency market, he was released from Sheffield United, but George Evans was holding that um, CDM role for quite a while. But Koulibaly, um, you know, I wanted him to be patient because I knew if we were going to get promoted, I just felt like Evans would be a bit out of his depth, whereas Koulibaly would thrive. And that has been the case this season. Koulibaly has been fantastic in the DM role and uh, playing alongside Alfie Devine. It's a, a brand new midfield for us. Obviously, those first two seasons, we rocked George Evans and Carlos Belaber. But yeah, those two have been fantastic this season. Well, going into the second game of the episode, as we look to make it back-to-back -back wins for the first time in a long time, we take on a rock bottom Bolton. Only four wins from their 33 league games. But they're only five points adrift to safety. It's quite a tight relegation battle down there this season. So they will be playing for their lives. And well, you could tell from the opening 15 minutes, they grab a really nice volleyed goal after a decent cross and they had dominated coming out of the blocks flying from this one. We had no changes um, for the first time in a while, actually. Um, I was really happy with the team, how they played against Millwall. So I fielded that 11 uh, in this one again. But Bolton were on top of us. And after a mistake from Fotheringham, he actually made up for his own mistake uh, with a smart save, saving from Charles. Um, and then on the stroke of half time, we would have a really good chance for a break here. Jacob Mendy, he's got Alex Lowry at the back stick. Can he find him? He does Lowry ice off the post. Mendy with the rebound. Oh, great save. Yeah, chance for an equaliser on the stroke of half time as the ref blows his half time whistle there. Bolton have actually been on top here. Um, we've kind of struggled against the relegation threatened teams here. The, you know, they seem to be just balling out and really fighting for their lives in these games. And, it, and the quality shows here is. Uh, they make it 2-0, 10 minutes into the second half. A beautiful lobs finish. Now, Bolton um, are one of those teams where um, if, you, if you're old enough to remember, you know, sort of in the early 2000s, they were in the Premier League and they had players like ballers like JJ Okocha, Nicholas Anelka, um, just like a UC Askelainen in goal as well, playing at what was the Reebok. Well, it is still the Reebok Stadium, but it's been renamed now. But yeah, but clubs like Bolton, Portsmouth, um, are just sort of old school uh, Prem size for me. So in real life, it's really cool to see Portsmouth being promoted back to the championship. And going into the final day of this season, Bolton are scrapping uh, Derby for that last automatic promotion spot. Going into the final day, uh, the th there's a three point gap. So Bolton need to win and need Derby to lose. Um, so it looks like Derby will probably go up and then Bolton will be in the playoffs. But yeah, I, I like Bolton. Um, hopefully they go up uh, via the playoffs, if not automatic. But let me know in the comments, who um, who are you looking? If you're on EFL Watch, there's still plenty to fight for as we enter the last week of the normal season. 
The uh, championship title race has been absolutely phenomenal all season. The battle for the playoffs is great as well. And then League One, there's still a big battle for the playoffs there and uh, and in League Two as well, I think. So, yeah, let me know if you're an EFL uh, supporter. Who do you support? Let me know in the comments. Well, uh, in this game, it would finish 2-0 to Bolton despite their league position. They um, they smashed us this game. You know they scored a lobbed goal in the second half. They oh, they hit the ball with another lobbed effort. They were sort of taking the mick out of us. I'll be honest, and I wasn't happy here, as you can see in the interview. So once again, it's one step forward, one step back. As we see here, Bolton that win takes them uh, four points adrift of safety, but a big victory for them as they look to stay in the championship. For us, yeah, it's another damaging defeat as um, our faint playoff hopes seem to be fading further. As we get the uh, Welsh Scout report, um, scouting update from Adam Gallagher, like there's about nine or ten players who I'm kind of keeping an eye on. Again, like we did last season, I'm, I'm happy to um, promote some players into the youth academy before the end of the season, but I want to see um, how these players are looking because, I, like I touched on the last episode, I don't just want to promote anyone now. I still I want it to be um, I want there to be good quality in at that youth academy now that we're in the in the heights of the championship, you know. We're heading into the third game of the episode. It would be Watford back at the race course. We've only got three wins in our last 14 league games. Very poor form right now. Hornets five points and five places above us as they look to complete the double over Wrexham, having beaten us 2-0 at Vicarage Road earlier in the season. Um, for Watford also five points off the playoffs, so they are pushing to uh, try and make the postseason and uh, return to the Premier League. Uh, we would make one change, uh, James Milner in for Elliot Lee, so a bit of a shuffle around Alfie Devine starting in Cam today. That was his position he was been playing in his earlier career, um, uh, when he was on loan at Plymouth, um, at Port Vale as well, and obviously in the game he went to Lille. We did drop him into the centre mid role, but I wanted to play him in Cam today just to see what he could do, start James Milner alongside Koulibaly in a more defensive role. Well, Watford... Uh, well, with 15 minutes to go, this is quite a quiet game, but we would break from a Watford corner. Jewison Bennett heading out to Paul Mullen. And this guy is just outrageous. Grabbing his 16th goal of the season inside his own box, beats his man and then just drives into the box, smashing the ball past the keeper. And it looks like we were going to return to winning ways, make it two wins from three, which would be a, a like valuable points for us. And uh, as we look to find any sort of form, but Watford would not go away and Schmid would force a really good save from Wes Fodderingham with just eight minutes to go. And then with a few minutes left on the clock, a corner comes in from the Hornets and uh, Sekou Mara, the former Southampton uh, playmaker, now at Watford, donning the uh, the burgundy or white kit. It's quite a nice kit, actually. He chests it down and finishes past Fodderingham. Wes could only do so much, but unfortunately, you know, we had one man on the near post, no one on the rear post, and uh, potentially they could have kept the ball out. But it's a late equaliser for Watford, and they're actually pushing now for the winner. But uh, fortunately for us, they do not get it, and Vicarage Roads, uh, they're kind of you know, happy with the late result, but. You know, when they're pushing for playoffs, drawing to a, a newly promoted side like Wrexham is, it's not a great result for them. And to be honest, I'm quite disappointed that we couldn't see out the win. Um, that would have been a nice uh, second win of the episode. But unfortunately, that is three wins in our last 16. Now it's uh, it's, it's it's probably it's probably a fair result that one. Um, Fodderingham made four or five fantastic saves, but we were clinical when we got our rare chances. As Roberts and Milner, well, uh, Roberts saying that he uh, wants to have a bit more games. Honestly, guys, let me know what you think I should do with Patrick Roberts because he's been really poor this season. I think he's maybe had four or five goal contributions at the most. I don't think he's scored this season. He has been very poor indeed. Maybe we'll have to look to ship him on. As we uh, head into the fourth and final game of the episode, it would be Southampton at St Mary's second in the table right now Saints as they look to uh, as they're in a four-way battle for the last automatic spot in real life um, Southampton recently got battered by Leicester 5-0 in what was a massive game at the top of the table that result all but basically confirms that Southampton will be in the playoffs this season rather than going up automatically in the game they're looking to change those fortunes and go up automatically. Well, they'd be off to the perfect start um, as they look to complete a, a double over us 
as they uh, beat us 2-1 uh, back in October. Will Smallbone, the man who is joining us in the summer, grabs just his second goal of the season and both have come against us. How ridiculous is that? He's not ashamed to celebrate as well, despite scoring against the team he will be joining in the summer. Uh, we made um, just one uh, sub as well. Uh, sorry, one change to the starting lineup. Elliot Lee was back in for Milner. Dro uh, we dropped Divine back to the centre mid roll. And uh, we would grab the equaliser. Paul Mullen making it. Is that three games in a row he scored now? PM10, where would we be without this man? 17 on the season now. Elliot Lee with another assist. And from kickoff, we would look, uh, those two would look to combine again. Lee finding Mullen, but he hits his shot into the ground. Good chance there for PM10, but a great response after going down to that early Will Smallbone goal. Well, Paul Mullen again would be at it, forcing the keeper into a really smart save. And then from the resulting corner, Divine into Mullen, but his header goes just wide of the post. I think it actually might have just shaved the post. Well, on the stroke of halftime, a great header out to Alex Lowry and would have a fantastic chance to go into halftime with the lead. Lowry finding Paul Mullen, who's in one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. When Paul Mullen has a chance like that, you just think that's hitting the back of the net. There is no doubt about it. The fact that it's gone wide is criminal. Going into the second half, 20 minutes on to go on the clock, it was a quiet second half. Mullen would smash the bar with, I mean, the guy could have had about four goals today already. And then deep into injury time, Mullen to Vata, the substitute, fresh legs. Can he burst into the middle? He's got men in the middle. He finds Paul Mullen. Here's Paul Mullen. Oh, he's hit the bar again. I do not believe it. Paul Mullen has hit the woodwork, I think, three times this game. And the referee blows full time. Wow. A draw at St. Mary's is not the worst result, but Paul Mullen had one. He could have had four or five. He hit the woodwork three times. He missed a one-on-one. -on -one. Had another good chance as well just after scoring the first goal. He could have had five today. Unfortunately, it was not to be, and it is another game without victory. That is three in a row now. After the start of the episode with a victory... That's back-to-back -back episodes now where we've won the first game and then failed to win any of the uh, resulting three. As we see the table here, 10 games to go. We are in that midfield pack. And guys, comment down below. I want to know what changes should we test out because I feel like we're in a rare situation now where we're not going to go up, but we're not going to go down. So now is the time with 10 games to go that we could potentially move some things around, maybe try a different formation. Is there a player you'd like to see given more uh, more of an opportunity in the team? Should we try some players in different positions? Let me know in the comments, guys. Let's test some things out and potentially prepare for next season. Well, that'll be it for today's episode. I hope you're enjoying the series. Make sure to drop a like on the video if you are. Sub to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in episode 53 very soon.